Hi everyone, welcome to Electric Vehicle Design Course. I am Nirmalai Kumar, a researcher in the field of electric vehicle. We at Dexray design a new kind of electric two-wheeler. So today we are going to learn about one of the key aspects in designing an electric two-wheeler. It's known as tractive force. Unfortunately, this tractive force has many components such as rolling resistance, aerodynamic drag, hill climbing force and acceleration force. So this will be the map of our course. We are going to discuss everything about these forces, develop equations and might do some problems also. So what is tractive force? By definition, it is a certain amount of force required to move the vehicle forward, overcoming all the resistive forces opposing the motion of the vehicle. This force is known as tractive force. Suppose we are going to move a vehicle forward from a point A to point B. During this time, there are certain amount of resistive forces that oppose the forward motion of the vehicle. We have studied some of these resistive forces during our early physics classes. I can mention you one here, it's friction, the frictional force which will oppose the forward motion of the vehicle and while the vehicle move forward there will be wind blowing which will also oppose the motion of the vehicle and there are other components also. So we have to overcome all these forces in order to move the vehicle forward. So we have to find the total amount of force that we should apply to move the vehicle forward in the desired acceleration and the desired manner that we want. So while designing an electric vehicle, why this is so important? Actually, this is the core part. We have to find the force that is required to move the vehicle forward. And after finding this force, we have to select a suitable motor which can give this kind of tractive force. Uh, by means of selecting motor, we have to identify the maximum power required by the vehicle and we will choose a good motor based upon that fact. To be very precise, the components of tractive force are rolling resistance, aerodynamic drag, hill climbing force and the acceleration force. The acceleration force is divided into two linear acceleration force and angular acceleration force. So now let's go for a ride and analyze each of these forces in detail. In this vehicle we can see that the tire slides over the road surface. So two surfaces are in contact and one surface is moving over the other surface. So a frictional force will be induced between them which opposes the forward motion of the vehicle. Here in the picture we can see the mass is acting downward from the center of gravity of the vehicle and the frictional force is opposing the motion of the vehicle. So the tire is sliding over the road surface. Two surfaces are in contact and one surface is sliding over the other surface. So this causes the rolling resistance. The Equation for rolling resistance is FRR equal to mu RR into mg, where mu RR is the coefficient of friction, which is a constant, and m is the mass of the vehicle, and g is the acceleration due to gravity. It is important to mention that the rolling resistance is independent of the velocity of the vehicle. Even some people today think that the rolling resistance has uh, a relation between the vehicle. If the vehicle accelerates or moves faster, the rolling resistance increases. That's just a myth. It, actually, the rolling resistance is independent of the velocity and it's very important to remember that. Regarding the coefficient of friction, the coefficient of friction depends upon the type of the tire and the air pressure in the tire. If the air pressure is very low, the coefficient of friction is also low. So it is important that we keep the air pressure in an optimum value so that the coefficient of friction is always very low. 
uh, usually the coefficient friction value lies between 0 and 1. So, there are different types of tires available in the market. Each has different values of coefficient of friction. The picture here shows a radial plate tire. The coefficient of friction value of radial plate tire is 0 0.015. However, if you are interested in knowing more about tires and its value of coefficient of friction, we will provide you a link with more details regarding that. So, for some specially developed electric vehicles, the value of rolling wheel system has been even reduced to 0 0.05, that's very low. So, in short, this rolling resistance only depends upon the mass of the vehicle and it does not depend upon the velocity of the vehicle. Moreover, the coefficient of friction depends upon the surfaces in contact. In this case, it is the surface of the road and the surface of the tire. As well as, it depends upon the air pressure of the tire also. Now let's go back to our moving car. Now it's time to accelerate our vehicle. Suppose that our vehicle is moving with a velocity of 40 meter per second. We have to accelerate or change the velocity to 100 meter per second. For that, we have to apply a force. This force must move the car forward as well as make the wheels rotate more faster. So, this force has two components. One which makes the car to move forward and the other component makes the wheels to rotate more faster. So we have to provide a linear acceleration and as well as a rotational or angular acceleration for this. So this acceleration force has two components. One is linear acceleration and another is component of angular acceleration. So for linear acceleration, it is basically Newton's laws of motion equation F is equal to ma. And for angular acceleration, right now we have shown you an equation which is I into G by R into NG where I is the moment of inertia of the motor and G is the gear ratio and R is the radius of the tire and NG is the efficiency of the gear system. We will discuss more about angular acceleration in another module. Right now just remember this formula for calculations and everything but in some particular cases we cannot find the moment of inertia of the vehicle we just take the angular acceleration as 5 percentage of the linear acceleration one of the other main component of tractive force is aerodynamic track so if we look into some of the high speed vehicles sports cars sports bike we can see that the frontal area of this vehicle are minimum. Why is this? Because this vehicle travel at very high speeds, are supposed to travel at very high speeds and during this it has to move or pass through the air ahead of it. So there is some kind of force which opposes the motion of vehicle through the air. So velocity plays a major role in aerodynamic drag and the frontal area also plays a major role. Now let's have a look at the formula. Uh, the FAD formula here, that's aerodynamic drag, has a linear relationship between the density of the air and the frontal area. And there is something known as coefficient of drag also. So if we look into the velocity, the aerodynamic drag is proportional to the square of the velocity. So at higher speeds, the aerodynamic drag will be very high. So vehicles traveling at high speeds like sports cars and sports bike, their designs must be optimized to make the aerodynamic drag to the minimum value at higher speeds. So the drag coefficient can be minimized by a good design. In case of electric vehicles, we have a lot of flexibility while comparing to petroleum vehicles. Since uh, there is no requirement for a large space for the engine and cooling systems, we can optimize the design more perfectly for reducing the aerodynamic drag at higher speeds. For a car, we 
normally take the value as 0.3 in problems and calculations and for buses have larger value it can be above 0.7 and evs in case of electric vehicles it is possible to minimize the coefficient of drag up to 0.19 as per current researches and one more thing while designing and for calculations the normal density of air is taken as 1.25 kg meter raised to minus 3 while talking about aerodynamic drag it is worth to mention about tesla roadster it is popularly known as the world's fastest electric car while designing this car they have even avoided the side mirrors to make the aerodynamic drag as minimum as possible Now let's assume that our vehicle is moving up a hill. The angle of inclination is assumed as theta. So if you look into the diagram, we can see that a component of weight opposes the motion or the upward motion of the vehicle. And seeing this diagram, you can see that mg sine theta is the component that opposes the motion of the vehicle, uh, where the theta is the angle of inclination. So this force is known as hill climbing force. While a vehicle is moving uphill, a component of weight opposes, uh, to be specific, the sine component of weight opposes the motion of vehicle while moving up and it aids the motion of the vehicle while moving down. That component is FHC which is equal to mg sine A where A is the angle of inclination. So guys, in this lecture we have discussed the various types of forces or the components of tractive force. So this table shows uh, the various components of tractive force and the tractive force is the sum of these components. So in this case we have to see that while slowing down the component of acceleration force will be considered as negative and while moving down a hill the component of uh, the hill climbing force is also considered as positive. This is because while moving down a hill, the vehicle weight also assists in the forward motion of the vehicle. So it helps the vehicle to move forward. So it's considered as positive. So guys, from the next lecture onwards, we will discuss about designing an electric two-wheeler and how exactly we can find the tractive force of an electric two-wheeler with an example then we will also discuss about how to select a suitable motor for a particular electric vehicle so thanks for watching this lecture and this table is very important and you should try to remember this or just copy it down or something if you have any doubt regarding this session you can just text me or we can get connected in my linkedin page and discuss thanks for watching